Hello everyone, and welcome to Who Ate It First, a food history podcast with a twist. I'm Kendall Runquist. And I'm Logan Runquist. How are you doing today? I'm awesome. How are you? I'm doing good. Would you like a foodie dad joke? A daddy foodie joke? A dad a daddy foodie joke? Yes, that's what we're calling it now. A daddy foodie joke. I don't like it, and I don't know what you're talking about, so sure, I'll take one. A foodie dad joke. Oh, got it. Okay. Like a dad joke, but it's a foodie dad. Got it. You know, you have like soccer dads. Do those exist? And hipster dads and sure. business dads. Right. Familiar. These are, these are foodie that. dad jokes. Got it. So they're food related. Got it. Is what I've deemed them. Give it to me. How fast is milk? Mooey fast. <laughs> nope, but that's good. <laughs> it's pasteurized before you know it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Would you like another? Sure. Honestly, I'll I'll be honest. That one took me a second <laughs> to uh to get there, but I got it. Uh, what did the baby corn say to its mom? It's corn. Where's my popcorn? Oh, <laughs> that is cute. <laughs> it's corn. It's corn. I miss that trend. That was fun. I enjoyed. Yeah, that was it. nice for two weeks. That thing circulated for like a month. <laughs> yeah, and you wouldn't stop seeing it. Yeah, well, it was really catchy. It was. It fit with everything. For some reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not talking about corn today. Okay. What are we talking about, honey? We are talking about a listener requested food today. Oh my gosh. Our very first listener requested food item. Yay. We're talking about chocolate chip cookies. Yay. Arguably some of the best cookies on this planet. Yeah. They're one of my personal favorites. This is actually something that we covered on our previous podcast, Tales of Plenty. So don't look for it. Don't go find it. It's only available on YouTube. Don't I mean, you don't can... tell them where it is. <laughs> don't go find it. Don't search for it. Don't do it. So it was kind of handy. I, I still had my notes. I made sure that they're still up to date, but uh, a lot of it was still accurate. So so if you heard our previous one and you want to skip forward to the cooking section, we won't uh, we won't, won't be mad. You. That's that's cool. <laughs> But if this is your first time, hi, hello, welcome. We're going to talk about chocolate chip cookies. So what are chocolate chip cookies? I'm from Mars and I don't know what a chocolate <laughs> chip cookie is. Please explain and take me to your leader. Chocolate chip cookie is what's called a drop cookie. So you drop, drop it, it on the ground. And then it bakes itself? Yeah. That's it. How do you prevent your dog from eating it? Um, you just hope he's not around. <laughs> But Korg is always around. Sadly, ours is always at our feet in the kitchen. He's literally at my feet right now while we're doing this podcast. Yeah, he does that. Because he's tired boy. Anyway, no, a drop, a drop cookie just means that the batter is something where you just drop it onto a baking sheet. And then as it cooks in the oven, it will melt and form into a cookie shape. It's okay. not like a sugar cookie where you need to cut it out and form it. And then throw it in the baking and throw it into the oven. In the baking mechanism, the baking. which is an oven. <laughs> yes. In the baking mechanism. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. So it's it's not pre rounded for you. It's allowed to uh spread. Yes. Got it. So the definition from Wikipedia is drop cookies are made from a relatively soft dough that is dropped by spoonfuls onto the baking sheet. During baking, the mounds of dough spread and flatten. There you go. That checks out. And examples of that is obviously chocolate chip cookies. Um, oatmeal raisin cookies are another one. Um, I know people talk about oatmeal raisin giving them trust issues because visually they <laughs> look like chocolate chip. I know. I I've, feel that. I've been there. I feel that. But I also, it's a nice uh, it's a nice break when it, if you're expecting to get a chocolate chip and you're like, gee willikers, what is this? And it's oatmeal raisin. It's kind of a nice... Uh, Nice surprise there. I'm always a little disappointed when it's an oatmeal raisin. Okay, well, I'm sorry. Personally, <laughs> I'm sorry. At it, least you're getting a cookie. Beggars can't be choosers. I mean, I think I'd rather just not have a cookie. What? Yeah, I don't like oatmeal raisin. 
You who hurt you? <laughs> How did oatmeal raisin hurt you so bad? I just haven't had a good one. Like it's just eh. Oh, I en- I enjoy them. I'm sorry. It's all right. So chocolate chip cookies were invented by a woman named Ruth Graves Wakefield. Ruth was born in 1903 in Massachusetts. It's a nice state, lovely foliage. <laughs> I've never assume. been, but <laughs> I'm guessing. She attended the Framingham State Normal School Department of Household Arts. Try saying that three times fast. Yes, it really rolls off the tongue. <laughs> Is there an acronym for that? The uh <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I that, that's really what I was looking for, and and I got it. Thank you. Okay. I think you can also just say Framingham State College. You know, uh, I think I prefer the first one. I think the first uh, one. Fisnick, diff, uh, I think the I really Framingham think. State Normal School Department of Household Arts. Frisnick, diff, uh, yeah, I prefer that one. Well, anyway, she went there in 1924, where she also worked as a dietitian and gave lectures about food. Nice. In 1930, her and her husband bought a tourist lodge and called it the Toll House Inn. I and love it. They named it this because the building was historically a place where people would pay tolls, change horses, and eat a home-cooked meal. Her cooking there quickly became famous around the region, in particular her lobster dinners and desserts. Eventually, she created the chocolate chip cookie with the help of her assistant Sue Bride and the cookie's first written appearance was in her 1938 edition of her Toll House Tried and True Recipes cookbook. Aww, that's so cute. Wasn't it an accident? There is a myth that it was an accident. There's a couple of different versions of this, but one of the myths is that she was using or she was using baking chocolate but ran out and decided to use chocolate pieces instead in her cookies. There was like another one that like the chocolate chips accidentally fell into her mixer. I've heard that one. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of different <laughs> myths about it. Wakefield spoke to some reporters when she was alive because this cookie became very popular. And in those interviews, she says that we had been serving a thin butterscotch nut cookie with ice cream. Everybody seemed to love it, but I was trying to give them something different. So I came up with the Toll House cookie. Mm-hmm. So in her in her statements to reporters it sounds like it was something that her and sue bride actually came up with it wasn't Mm -hmm. an accident it It wasn't because she ran out of something and just was like oh let's just use this there was also one where like there was a myth that she thought the chocolate chips would melt in the cookie but they held their shape instead that was another myth Mm. but it sounds like this was on purpose and something that she actually did invent oh thank you Dispelling myths. That's what we do here on this podcast. The one time in food history, it seems like, that there's not necessarily a bunch of like myths and no one knows which one is true. There's no discrepancies. There are myths, but it sounds like it's pretty, we're pretty certain that the truth is she really did just invent it and come up with it. Got it. It sounds like we have proof, we have written proof, and then we, I'm assuming, are going to get some patents happening. That seems to be the issue in the past of people didn't patent things. So Yes. Well, so getting into that. Well, I guess not talking about that just yet. The cookie was very popular at the Toll House Inn and started to gain regional fame in the area. Lots of people would come by pretty much just to have the cookies for (laughs) whatever. I don't want to stay here. I just... uh, I mean, it was already famous for her cooking because it sounds like she was an amazing cook and chef, but the, the chocolate chip cookie really took off at that place and part of it was due to world war ii actually world war ii had started around this time Mm -hmm. that the cookie was being made and due to its popularity and ease of getting shipped it's something that people started putting in care packages a lot to send to the soldiers that were fighting in world war ii we love that this was so popular or the the soldiers loved them so much that they would write home asking for more of them (laughs) they would get shared by all the other soldiers from all over the country because they're all in the same place Mm. that 
the rest of the nation started to hear about these chocolate chip cookies. So it became this regional popular dessert to a nationwide craze mm -hmm. that everybody was, was wanting them. The cookie became so popular that Nestle made Ruth an offer. Ruth gave Nestle the rights to the recipe for a dollar and a lifetime supply of chocolate. For a dollar? And a lifetime supply of chocolate. Okay. Did she say no? Because that's kind of a that's kind of not a good deal. No, she said yes. Okay. Well, honey, I feel like you could have you could have asked for a little bit more. <laughs> Fifty bucks back then that would have been a lot. Mm -hmm. I think she was more after the lifetime supply of chocolate. I mean, Willy Wonka did offer that to Charlie. Mm -hmm. So I mean that that is a tantalizing prospect, I suppose. Yeah. But know your worth, you know. Yeah. Know your worth, friends. So Ruth passed away in 1977 at the age of 73. Mm -hmm. Nestle continues to put her recipe on their bags of chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. You might remember from our other episode. The Nestle chocolate chip cookie recipe is the one that I use pretty much all the time. It's the one that my mom used. Um, kind of passed it on to me, too. Mm -hmm. So that's the most common chocolate chip cookie recipe that I use whenever I'm baking chocolate chip cookies. It's so good. I remember crying during the last episode yeah. when we when were you, talking about this part. When you part. realized it was that same recipe. Yeah. That's really sweet. And I like that. Yeah. I appreciate that. I wonder if there's like her name on it somewhere. I don't have a package of it in front of me, but I'd just be curious to know if her name is on it. Yeah. Down at the bottom or something. I will say, though, one thing I didn't mention in the other episode that I found out while I was reviewing my research is... That according to Sue Bride's daughter, Peg, who was discussing this in a 2017 interview, she says that the Nestle recipe that's printed on the bags is not the true original recipe. <gasps> it's actually something different. Oh, my gosh. And I have it written here. It's also on Wikipedia if you want to look up chocolate chip cookies. Thanks, Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> um, according to her, there's no actual butter. It just uses one and a half cups of shortening. Mm. Um, and then she does have uh, one and eighth cups of sugar and brown sugar, three eggs, one and a half teaspoons of salt, three and one eighth cups of flour, one and a half teaspoons of hot water, and one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. And in the interview, she said that you put the baking soda in the hot water to dissolve it before you mix it in with the rest of your wet ingredients. This is a very strange addition. Yeah. And then one and a half teaspoons of vanilla and then chocolate chips. Is that somehow trying to compensate for the fat loss of the butter? I'm not really sure. I mean, doing? shortening is fat, so. But that checks out, though, because since this was developed during World War II, mm -hmm. all the butter and supplies and stuff were being sent to the boys. True, so yeah. So they I wouldn't mean, have had butter. So that, that makes sense, actually. Yeah, that is possible. So according to Peg, that is what the true original recipe is and not the one printed on the nestle bags well you heard it here folks that's fascinating thank you honey you're welcome so that's all i have for the history our recipe that we're going to make uh, which is not actually going to be the nestle recipe this time I bait make... and switch <laughs> <laughs> i make that all the time we decided to do a different recipe just slightly different it's a recipe from the Disney cookbook that we own. Yes, the unofficial Disney Parks cookbook, I yeah. think is what it's called. And that recipe is the Jack Jack's Nom Nom Cookies Yay! from the Incredibles 2 movie. Yay! Everybody's seen the Which Incredibles. Is... <laughs> <laughs> I love that scene. Jack Jack, Nom Nom Cookie. Cookie, cookie Nom Nom. nom, nom. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. It's so funny. Can I tell you a fun fact really quick? Yeah. In Disneyland, where they have that overlay, it used to be California Screamin', the ride. It's now uh, the Incredicoaster. So the th the plot of the ride is that Jack-Jack has escaped and all the supers have to catch him and you're on this roller coaster. And when you pass a certain area, like when he goes, Jack-Jack, nom-nom cookie, they have a smell that wafts <laughs> of chocolate chip cookies. Awesome. Uh, just... Add it to the ever-growing list of why we need to go to California and why we need to go to Disneyland as soon as possible. 
just reason 349. Well, let's hop on into the kitchen and start making some nom nom cookies. And maybe Jack Jack will show up. Oh my Who gosh, knows? Jack Jack! <laughs> nom nom cookie! All right, we are here in the kitchen. Bop, bop, bop. Bop, bop, bop. So yes, this is, the cookbook is the unofficial Disney Parks cookbook written by Ashley Craft. Yes, Ashley, we stand. Your guide to the happiest kitchen on earth. <laughs> We're getting there. I would say our kitchen is uh, mildly happy, <laughs> marginally happy. <laughs> so again, since these are unofficial Disney Park recipes, they're not... They are recreations that she created through testing of eating them at the park and then trying to recreate them in their own kitchen. Yes, because obviously in Disneyland, they sell gigantic Jack Jack Nom Nom cookies. Yes. So according to her, to recreate the Jack Jack Nom Nom cookies in the parks is three tablespoons of unsalted butter softened, three tablespoons of vegetable shortening, a quarter cup of light brown sugar, a quarter cup of granulated sugar, half a teaspoon vanilla extract, one large egg, three quarters cup all-purpose flour, half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, and one cup of chocolate chunk cookies. Whoops. One cup. What the actual? (laughs) And then you need chocolate chip cookies. (laughs) Because that's how you actually make them. You just buy them. One cup of chocolate chip cookies to make chocolate chip cookies. That doesn't make sense. (laughs) You need one cup of milk chocolate chunks. That checks out. There we go. I got it out. (laughs) So this recipe serves three. So you're going to make three large cookies with it. The first step is to preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Line three four-inch ramekins with parchment paper and set aside. Then in the bowl of a stand mixer, or really you could just do this by hand because it's just cookies, you're going to add the butter and shortening. Using the flat beater attachment or just a spatula, cream together well. Add brown sugar and granulated sugar and beat two minutes. Mix in vanilla and egg, then mix in flour, baking soda, and salt. Stir in three quarters cups of the chocolate chunks. Of the chocolate chip cookies. (laughs) Of the chocolate chip cookies. Then step three is you're going to pack each ramekin with about half an inch of cookie dough and top the dough with the remaining quarter cup of chocolate chunks and bake for 15 minutes. Step four is to let them cool. And then nom nom. (laughs) I made that the last part. (laughs) And there you go. Chocolate chip cookies are pretty straightforward. (laughs) A nice little break from our souffles and king cakes and all that jazz that we've been making. So we're going to whip these guys up in our kitchen and head on over to Rave or Roast to discuss our thoughts. See you all there. Bye. All right, we are back for Raver Roast. Raver Roast. I thought it was tasty. Very I liked good. it. Um, it tasted like a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Let's see here. I gotta think of something to say about it. I don't know. Maybe that's honestly. Maybe that's the thing. Like I thought it tasted fine. I wouldn't say it was like mind blowing as a cookie or revolutionary. It tasted like a chocolate chip cookie. Yeah. I don't know if it was better necessarily than the Nessie recipe. I would probably just give this one like a six or seven. Whoa. Chef's kisses. That sounds like you didn't like it. I did, but I, I'm I'm saying six or seven in the sense that like it was good, but not like one of the best things I've ever had. Mm, okay. In my opinion. Like thinking about other things that we've eaten so far. Like the soufflés, which we've never made before. 
or the king cake, which was something new to me, at least. This was just a chocolate chip curry, I guess. Um, you know, if it was something more of a unique chocolate chip cookie that turned out good, I'd probably rate it higher. But since it was just like a fairly standard chocolate chip cookie recipe. Just a little bit thicker. Yeah, just a thick boy. <laughs> then I think I'm just going to give this one. I'll say a seven. Like, it was good. I It was good. I don't have anything bad to say about the cookie other than it was just kind of a standard chocolate chip cookie, just a large version of a chocolate chip cookie. Okay. I see what you're so, saying. Would I eat it again or make it again? Yeah, definitely. I see what you're saying. It's so my turn. It is your turn. Um, I think I'm going to give it eight chef's kisses. Oh, fancy, fancy. I think it was really good. I enjoyed them. I do see what you're saying that I guess it is your standard. This is a chocolate chip cookie. There's nothing really fancy to it. I'll give it to you that it was a little bit different because there wasn't as much butter in it because it was half butter, half shortening. So I guess that's like slightly different yeah. than most people's recipes. It seems like with the normal Nestle recipe, it tastes a little buttery. Yes. Um, versus this one, which didn't taste as buttery because okay. it's not using as much butter. And we're using some vegetable shortening in as well. Agreed. So yeah, I, I see the point you're making. I still think it was really good. I think the texture was good. I think it's cute because you can put them in little ramekins. Mm -hmm. I think that's very nice and aesthetically pleasing. Um, I feel like this would be really cute for like a kid's birthday party. And so I can see how this would appeal to children. Um, or even you can make it an adult birthday party if you want. I mean, <laughs> I feel like these would appeal because they're like, hey, it's bigger than a normal cookie. Would you say this is the equivalent to maybe like two cookies, two and a half cookies? Worth? Yeah, yeah. Two to three, probably. Yeah, two and a half, maybe medium ones, three, yeah. maybe smaller It's like a ones. deep dish cookie. Yeah, it's a very, very small pizookie, mm -hmm. if you're familiar with <laughs> BJ's Brew House. But yeah, no, I'm going to give it an eight. But I see what you're saying. Uh, if we're Now, if we're trying to compare it to, you're right, souffles or even the difficulty of French fries, they did take us 48 hours now. Yeah. Are French fries difficult? Uh, obviously not. They are very simple, but very time consuming. Same thing with boba tea. Is boba tea simple? Sure. It's only a handful of ingredients. Is it difficult on the difficult level scale we have going here? Um, yeah, it is incredibly <laughs> difficult. Is so, it worth it? No, not at all. <laughs> is it worth it? Just go buy some. I still I still stand on that hill. Just go buy some boba tea. Yeah, I think I'll die on that hill too. Don't make your own. Don't do it. But so I see what you're saying. On scale of novelty, difficulty, ingenuity. <laughs> it's it's not really any of those things. It is a good take on the humble chocolate chip cookie. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Does does it taste good and does it do what it set out to do which is imitate the jack jack nom nom cookie yes so in that sense i would definitely give it like an eight or nine exactly um, i do think the ones in california are bigger though from uh, what really? i've seen in pictures oh, okay. i mean i've never had one so i can't exactly tell you want to talk about sorry this is a total sidetrack i know we're in the raver roast part of our podcast but i'm you want to talk about good disney cookie Go to, what the heck's the name of the place? Honey, where are you going with this? Place, it was like the Monsters, and they have the really big cookies. They have the Monsters, and they have the really big yeah, cookies. Yeah, it's like the kind of spooky place. The kind of spooky place. Gideon's Bakehouse. Yeah, in go Disney to Gideon. Springs. Yeah, go to Jeez. Gideon's Bakehouse. Louise. <laughs> I can remember the name of it. I had no idea what you were talking about. Gideon's Bakehouse. Uh, yes, Gideon's Bakehouse in Disney Springs, Florida. I think Gideon's has a couple of other locations. They use half a pound of cookie dough and ingredients in every single one of their cookies. I think I ate one cookie in six sittings they because are... I couldn't eat it for very long before it was just too much. They are dense. They are rich. They are delicious. They will ruin you for all <laughs> they other They will cookies. ruin you. Okay. They oh. were so good, though. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about innovative <laughs> and ingenuity with cookies. They have a really funky vibe. Yes. They are doing a new thing with being really, really thick boys with all these ingredients. <laughs> that is one of probably the best chocolate chip cookies I've ever had. Because guess how long it took me to eat it? Three days, approximately. And no regrets. <laughs> 
Yes, they were good. Yeah, you had the regular chocolate chip. I think I had the double chocolate chip, which yes. was good, but I also slightly regretted because I only could have a little bit before I was like comatose from chocolate. They are incredible. They also sell humongous slices of cakes. Oh for, my God, yeah. for my people on the West Coast, if you know Claim Jumper, the restaurant, they had the mother load chocolate cake. It is six layers of chocolate cake and fudge icing, all topped with walnuts. The one slice of this sucker is served to you in a shoebox <laughs> if you get it to go. I am not joking you. We've gotten it to go many a time in a shoebox. <laughs> Men size 10 shoebox. Like <laughs> it is enormous. So Gideon sells that kind of caliber of cake slices as well. And I think coffee cakes. Yeah, yeah they sell a lot cakes. of cakes. Coffee, stuff. really good coffee. Okay, now I want to go back to Disney. <laughs> um. Okay, yeah. Uh, we're going to go really yeah. quick to florida for research <laughs> for research purposes dear listener if you ever find yourself at gideon's go to it there's usually <laughs> there's usually a line too so you actually have to plan out that out i do believe it is a much like you would do like rise of the resistance or um guardians of the galaxy it's like a digital online wait list oh really okay yeah, when we went, there was a physical line, but sometimes when the physical line gets longer than a certain point, yeah, you sign up. Yeah, they put you in a digital queue. <laughs> I think we also got lucky and were there like right before they closed, so we got in pretty quick. Yeah, we did. Oh man, they're so good. So anyway, dialing back <laughs> to our episode, I can't <laughs> of the chocolate chip cookie. I think that about wraps it up. In terms of what it set out to do, I would give it an eight or a nine. In terms of taste, I'd probably just say six or seven because it's, there's nothing really special. It's just, it's a deep dish cookie, chocolate chip cookie. Yeah, that's okay. I'll stand by my eight. It was it was pretty delicious and, and I ate it. So I'm going to give it an eight. Get, get it? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, everyone, to Who Ate It First. If you liked our podcast, please help us out by following our Instagram account to see some behind the scene pictures or by leaving us a review on your preferred podcast platform. As a reminder, I'm still willing to eat a lemon like it's an apple. <laughs> Me once too. Once we hit 10 reviews on Apple Podcasts. I think we're currently at four. Thank so, you for those four. Yeah, we do appreciate the four. Um, so we're just looking for six more listeners to go ahead and leave a review. I will, on Instagram, post a video of me biting into a lemon like it's an apple. I've been getting a lot of confusion about whether I'm biting or eating the whole lemon. I will say we'll see how much I enjoy it. And if I keep eating the whole thing, then that's what happens. And will I need yes. to take a lot of Tums after that? Probably. Maybe. You know, I'll join right in. I will I will have a lemon also. Kendall will go first. And I can yep. go second. But my uh my deal with our listeners still stands. If we manage to get to ten reviews, then uh I'll do it. We'll do it. <laughs> and uh I promise weirder stuff in the future if we ever get bigger than 10 reviews but anyway probably not eating things though perhaps <laughs> making something cool yeah or i don't know maybe yeah, you'll eat we've something we've talked weirder. about doing fun things like baking croissants which are pretty intense mm. or making i don't know other wild stuff than just you know croissants <laughs> also we'd love to hear from you if you have a food you'd like us to do on an episode like this one pictures of your attempts to recreate the same dishes that we've covered or a funny food story you'd like to share with us, then email us at who ate it first at gmail.com or leave comments on our Instagram. Or you can DM me as well. I do read the DMs. Yeah. So we definitely engage in our Instagram account if people send us messages. Talk to me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Once again, I am Kendall Runquist. And I'm Logan Rehnquist. And it has been delicious. And chocolatey. Bye, everyone. <laughs>